Oh no, you got the blue one. I don't, bro. You do have the blue eyes, bro. I don't. It was a blue, mine's a black, bro. That's the same. Bro, it was a blue. Today, we'll be talking to you about GCSEs and A levels and their importance for your dental application. So the answer to this is a bit tricky because it's a bit of yes and a bit of no. Because bottom line, universities just require you to have seven GCSEs and they can have any subjects. However, some universities like the University of Birmingham do want certain grades in certain core subjects. For example, they want sevens in English and maths and they want eights in biology and chemistry. Mm. So this, this really varies from university to university. However, there is a bit more importance to GCSE nowadays because there is the new system of the grades seven to nines and the linear course that it is. Before there was AS grades and uh, AS exams that you had to take and that's what they could uh, base your printed grades off. However, because there is none of that middle examination period between GCSE and A level, yeah. there isn't much that they can go off. So there is some importance attached to yeah. your GCSE grades. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing just to add uh, with English, um, the seven requirement for Birmingham University is for either English language or literature. Um, and also we'll be writing in the description links to all entry requirements for all universities that you can apply to for dentistry. Mm -hmm. So the answer to this is no. Universities don't really require you to pick triple science to get into dental school. However, it can be helpful when transitioning between GCSE and A-level because a lot of the GCSE uh, content at Triple Science is an extension of what you will learn in the first year of A-levels. So it can be helpful in transition phase. However, it's not really a requirement from any university. So yes, I think at GCSE time, this is a great opportunity for you to make the most of everything that you have because extracurricular activities such as playing sports, maybe picking up a musical instrument or even anything that just pushes you out of your comfort zone will help develop your character and develop you as a person and all the traits that you learn from this can really help you in the application process when you do want to study dentistry. For me and Umar, what really helped was making the most out of the resources that are available to us. So things such as specifications for each subject, mark schemes for past exam papers. Looking through this really helped you highlight what was useful and what we needed to know. Yeah. And it really puts you at ease when you start to go through a flow, understanding what you need to know mm -hmm. for a certain subject. Also, there are so many resources available online, such as Physics and Maths Tutor, Corbett Maths, and loads of YouTube videos available. And we will link to some of these in the description. So, you type in physics and maths tutor, and it comes up here. Now, from this home page, you have GCC section and an A level section. If you want GCC uh, material, you go into the GCC section, and you have papers and revision. So, if we were to do some biology revision, we have different worksheets for different boards so if I wanted to do OCRA um, I've got all the OCRA topics and revision sheets that are really good and they have question papers and um, questions for particular topics that we've just clicked on now similarly on the A level section we have also revision but we also have past papers as well and this is for the GCC section and the, um, the A level section so for example, if we wanted an A-level paper, we go on to, let's, let's do maths this time, a maths paper. And here we have full maths papers for these different boards here. So if we were to go um, A-level OCR um, MEI, here we have different past papers for different years. And we've got mark schemes as well. So for example, the June 2018, this is your past paper. And that's it.
it's generally recommended that you choose um, biology and chemistry. However, we know guys that have gotten into dental school that haven't done a biology, haven't done a chemistry um, A level. So it's a bit up and down. Um, it's generally recommended also that you choose between maths, uh, physics, chemistry and biology, those four main ones. Um, but again, there can always be exceptions. It's probably worth looking at your universities. Um, again, it can be very university by university basis, uh, depending on what requirements they want. Typically, the grades required are go from three A's to uh, A star AA, depending on what university you're applying to. Um, it's worth noting that predicted grades um, are, the, are the grades that the universities will see. You actually do your application process before your final A-levels. So the year 12 mock exams that you'll do are actually very dependent. Uh, they judge your predicted grades. So mm -hmm. it's very important to stay focused in year 12 to make sure you're hitting those um, predicted grades of A A A, -A and A star A A. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the main one being work experience. That's got to be uh, part of your dental application and, and that will be used for your personal statement as well. Um, other things include what you mentioned previously. You've got to get involved in stuff that's going to develop your character. It really looks good in uh, not just your personal statement, but in your interview. You can really come across well-rounded well, well rounded, um in an interview if you have had a lot of different experiences and different types of experiences as well. So I had quite a hard time during A-levels. Uh, I spent quite a lot of time dithering as to what type of revision methods work and what don't. Um, you know, you speak to your friends, they're revising this way, you speak to my other friends, they're revising this way, and you're like, okay, what do I do? So for me, what actually what actually worked was Going through large bulks of information, for example, your school notes or your textbook stuff and making condensed flashcards in shorthand form um, quite relatively quickly um, and creating like, a, like a, a bank of these small revision notes so that you can sift through them all together at the end uh, towards the latter stages of your revision, closer towards exam time. And I think for me, that was the most efficient way of revising. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to add is it's really crucial that you stay on top of it as it as the course goes along. So second year 12 starts, you've got to be keeping on track of uh, of your of your work. And and hopefully it, it should be quite a, an efficient and a consistent journey. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. Hopefully you guys found that useful. And all we've got to say is stay, stay tuned, tuned for more. more. Yeah, 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 yeah. What grades? Again, it's all typical, isn't it? There's no absolutes at any point. I know, yeah. but... Actually, I don't do if, buts, and maybes. I do absolutes. <laughs>